The type of people that we hire at Google are people that disrupt the status quo. They push back on bureaucracy. They are passionate about technology, well, some more than others, more engineers than me, really. They um, believe in ownership. They believe in development and collaboration. And really, they're the folks that we're trying to nurture here and trying to build an ecosystem for them so they can be creative and so they can be innovative. This is Laszlo Bach. He is the Senior Vice President of People Operations. And for him, the three-part framework that really explains what our culture is, is mission, transparency, and voice. So it's pretty rare in a company that a company retains the same mission that they started off with 15 years ago. It's pretty rare that employees actually know what the mission is, remember the mission, and actually care about the mission. For us, we really believe in the products that we're selling, and we really believe that we are creating more collaboration across the globe and making, making the world a better place by having Google's products and increasing education of folks across all regions of the world. In terms of transparency, I've worked in a few companies and I have never met a company that is as transparent as Google. It's literally access all areas. So I have two examples to illustrate what that is to you so you can think about how it would work in your own companies. Firstly, um, on Fridays, we have what's called TGIF. So it's in a room such as this um, in Mountain View, which is our headquarters, and people can video conference and hang out into the room. There's beers, there's snacks, everyone's just having chat, relaxing, enjoying the fact that it's Friday. Larry and Sergey hold a Q&A session at the beginning of each of these TGIFs. So our founders come and they talk to us about what's going on in the industry this week why we paid so much money to acquire Nest, why we didn't acquire any other type of company that maybe is on sale that week. And it's also an opportunity for employees to stand up and to ask questions of our leaders and to ask questions of our founders. And the questions really range from anything, such as why we acquired Nest, uh, to, you know, I think Larry was asked a few weeks ago what his favorite superhero is. So literally, the gambit is very broad. And I believe that that transparency really shows a trust and a respect that our founders have for our employees, and a respect that they won't share all the information that they're hearing outside of Google, and a trust that they, they're empowered to share that information and that the employees are respected enough to receive it. Finally, the third area is voice. So if you don't have a voice, you probably shouldn't be in Google. These guys love to talk and they love to give feedback. And as managers and as leadership, we love to receive it. So I'm going to talk about one or two areas later on where you'll get a feel for the, the type of the feedback loop and the voice that we're encouraging our Googlers to have on an ongoing basis. Open is better than closed is one of the key tenants um, here at Google. And that really shows itself in all of our products. So, Google's enterprise products actually started off as internal tools because Googlers wanted to find ways to collaborate. They wanted to find ways to work faster. They wanted to find ways to be able to work on things in real time and not be held up by the folks in Mountain View still asleep while we're all working away here in Europe. And so the Google enterprise tools were born and they have evolved as um, companies have evolved around the world and they've started to be taken on by other companies. In terms of Google itself, it's so large and there's so many opportunities that come up all the time. And for us to be able to scale and to remain innovative, we need to be able to be in a position where we can jump on any opportunities that come to us across, um, across the industry. So we create only as much structure as necessary. We have pretty broad job descriptions. We encourage a huge amount of mobility. I've worked in six different countries since I started here and I've worked in about eight or nine different roles. And really, we try and ensure that our employees are in a place where they can flex and jump and move from one project to the other. In terms of providing the raw materials, I've talked a bit about our enterprise products. And they just really help our employees collaborate more and work at speed and be agile. Our managers are different to many managers than I have seen in other companies. So our managers work for the teams, not the other way around. Um, we definitely see them as enablers and we see them as resources. They're not blockers, they're not bosses, they're not standing in the way. The atmosphere between a report and their manager is pretty collaborative and is pretty open and pretty flat, and we would encourage that. Hierarchy in general in Google is, is pretty flat. In terms of the environment, you may or may not have visited Google before, and I'm sure you've been able to have a look around today. We have a lot of open spaces. We have a lot of huddle areas. We've 
our cafes have like long benches so that people are sitting beside each other and sitting beside more than the people they just queued up with to get their lunch. And Gmail was created, well, the idea for Gmail was created when two engineers were playing table football. So to us, we really feel that innovation and ideas can be, can be um, lit up anywhere in, no matter where you are, whether you're in the confines of an office or out in freedom in huddle areas. And we really try and build that environment so that we're ensuring that our Googlers have these opportunities. So two of the things I'm going to, I'm going to talk about two people studies really briefly. I see my time. I'm going to talk about two people studies that I think may be interesting to you. So first of all, um, we have our employee engagement survey. So you may have heard of Google Geist. Google Geist is our annual employee engagement survey. We have 40,000 employees in this company and we have a 93% response rate. So it's pretty strong. It's a pretty phenomenal response rate. 85% of Googlers feel that we use this survey to make real change in the company. And the fact that we're asking Googlers to give all of this feedback, and it's feedback on anything. We ask them about their work, their role, innovation, culture, their manager, their peers. They love their peers. It's like 98% of people like the people that they work with. And we talk to them about work-life balance. We talk to them about their well-being, everything. And we act on that feedback. And I think that's the key thing that makes our employees feel engaged, that we're listening to them and we're acting on the issues that they're coming up against. We're working through a really big performance management change at the moment because Googlers for the last three years have told us, frankly, they don't get enough use out of the performance management system. And so we're revamping the whole thing to make it much more attractive for them and to make it more employee focused. Another thing you may have heard of is Project Oxygen. So in 2006, when the analytics team um, started, they were literally put in a room with bread and water, that was it, no sweets, and they were told to hypothesis, come up with numerous hypotheses about what does or what they can or cannot prove. And one of the things they came up with, one of the questions was, do good managers matter? Does it matter the amount of time that we spend developing our managers? In, when Google was about two or three years old, Larry and Sergey actually got rid of all managers. And there was no managers in the whole company. Now, the company was small. It was maybe 300 or 400 people. But Larry was getting so annoyed by people coming up to question him about their expenses, to talk to them about when they're going to get promoted. There was just too much for him to handle. So we decided to, A, get some management in the system, and then also figure out what are the best traits in a manager? What makes a really good manager? And so we spent a bit of time looking at Google Geist, which is our engagement survey, which talks a lot about management. We spent a bit of time looking at a great manager award nominations, which is an annual award for good managers. Upward feedback surveys, which is again, is a six month um, feedback survey that we're asking Googlers, how good is your manager? Where's their development areas? And we pulled out these, these eight attributes that really, for us, is the culmination of what, the best, what a best manager is. And we use these to, when we're interviewing candidates, we really check and probe on all of these areas. We've also developed um, a very detailed learning and development curriculum where you can address each of these areas if you feel that you're poor in them and if you feel they need to be developed. So for us, um, Project Oxygen is really making us have the best managers, which makes us have the best employees, which helps us retain employees and build a really strong culture. So in summary, a lot of the things that I have spoken about, you don't really need money to do. It's about a, it's about a culture change. It's about enabling behaviors that are, that are attractive to employees. It's about giving people freedom and giving people space to be innovative and to be creative. And for me, these are the things that sets our culture apart from other companies and what makes Google, Google. So thank you.